Welcome, Diecast fans. I'm Tom Spanners Watson. And I'm Frank Figuri Gibbs. And it's time for another DSPN report. Just a reminder the DIRS has finished up at Transport Diecast, but you can still go back and watch those first few rounds. It's now moved on to Monster Motorsport, so make sure you subscribe to all of the channels involved. And of course, the new Diecast Racing Report is out. Make sure you go and check that out. It's got a ton of information in there. Really good read. It's over at diecastracingreport.com. Right, getting straight into it tonight. Drag racing. First up, we've got Scorpio Love Smith and the Dave Akers Customs Drag Race. Now, this was really cool because there was a whole lot of very nice custom cars put together by Dave here. And as always, Scorpio Love Smith doing a great job with lots of entertainment. Then it's over to Rust Belt Racing for the Micro Mod Drag Racing. So micro cars on a micro drag track, but a lot of fun, lots of chaos, and you know that we love that. Then it's over to We Race Diecast for their continuation of King of the 621. These guys are part of the DIRS. It'll be at their track in a couple of months, but they've got plenty of racing on in the meantime. If you haven't seen their channel, go and check it out. There is a heap of stuff there. Now, something really interesting over at GNR Vintage Diecast, he broke out the left-handed monster. This is one of JLH Craft's huge six-laned corners. These things are a work of art. To get those angles and everything just right, beautiful bit of 3D modeling and a great bit of printing and a lot of exciting racing action, especially for those of you with a six-lane track, you're definitely gonna wanna check that one out. And it's over to Low Country Diecast Racing for some great drag racing action there. I love that little hump just out of the start gate and then right at the end there with the open track, just providing that slight randomness factor which keeps it really entertaining. Red Pill Racing was doing a NASCAR run, so he started with some timed races just to get it some seating and then proceeded to the head-to-head -head racing. As always, Red Pill, some very top quality drag race action there and some very, very close races. Now, Mr. Mom's Racing did something really different this week. Check this out. <laughs> oh man, what a sweet burnout. That's right. They were racing the Hot Wheels RC cars. Now, these things are crazy fast and just look like a ton of fun. I wish we could get them in New Zealand. I haven't seen them anywhere yet. If anybody does, let us know because we'd love to get our hands on a couple just for fun. Well, we've finally got Crash Racers track, so maybe we'll be in luck with the RC cars too. And of course, Mr. Mom's Racing doing a great job with their drag track. It's awesome. Now, Blue Line Racing, we're doing the Hot Wheels factory 500 horsepower cars. So these are all cars based on factory vehicles that come out with more than 500 horsepower and he was putting them all head to head. It's a great little series and a lot of fun to watch. Again, very close racing as you get with quite a few of the drag races. Now, Daikar64 did something quite different for him in the Builders Challenge. It was the Dragonfly track. So this one here, he starts out with a Dukes of Hazard style cops versus the Duke boys, but you can see it's a straight drag down and a laned track, then a huge jump. I think it's like a full foot gap there into the wide track and then down to the finish line and there were just some epically good races. Hot Wheels Calgary were doing their daily races and again some super close races. That one there the dude stalled out but check this one out. Absolute tie. You can't get much closer than that. Then we've got Main Street with their double loop competition and I really wasn't expecting this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle car to do very well at all. The party wagon, as we saw over at Indiana Diecast Racing for their plethora of party wagons, can get a bit wild, but it did really well. All right, stick around, we'll be right back with tournaments. Welcome back, folks. Now, we mentioned before that the DIRS has moved on to Monster Motorsport and it has been a beauty so far. Rubber Toad doing a great job over there with his live broadcasts on Facebook and then they're posted to YouTube the following day. But there has been some incredible action on this track. I don't know if you noticed there, but the white car coming down just got nailed going through the gate at the top here. You'll see it there, boom, straight into it. Yeah, he's had a few cars go off there, hasn't he? He sure has. But then uh, here, you've got Nick Devers with just a dream run and he's so far out in front he decides to spin around and show off but he almost lost it right at the end there with Fractal Panda right on his tail. And then it was over to our own Mustang Memorial races and speaking of blowing big leads that's Big Sam out in front 
Haynes Junt and with a savage block there and he lets the entire field go past him pretty much. So he went from first to a DNF. It was just such a waste of a big lead but he was so keen to stop Haynes Junt from passing him that he just threw it all out the window and blocked himself off as well. Yeah, that was just a crazy move. Now, Threes Racing over at Tune Tracks Diecast Racing. Unfortunately, we didn't do so well in this competition, but this CRX is just blazingly fast. Yeah, that thing is crazy. It set another track record in this competition again. This thing just looks unstoppable. No wonder everybody wanted it. Now, speaking of unstoppable, I was over at Diecast Dragger's track, and I thought I'd uh, take on Chris from Tune Tracks, and I schooled him. Whoa, did you install like three turbos in that Lotus or something? Nah mate, I just hit it with a bigger hammer, but I dragged him by a mile. <laughs> you absolutely left him behind. Man, I thought that Nova would have cleaned you up for sure. No chance, mate. All right, over to Roadrunner, and they were into their finals. And this track is really cool, you know? It's quite long, a few twists and turns, and then this big, long U-turn finish on the flat. Very technical track, actually, with that long flat section right at the end. Now, m and Diecast Racing had more great tournament action here with some very close races, some great overtakes, and just a lot of action. And I love that one with that Cougar going up on two wheels, but managing to pull it back. Now, over to Indiana Diecast Racing and his Sock Hop Slam. This thing is huge. There's like over 150 vehicles, I think it was, that were sent into him. Absolutely massive. And just a really cool competition and some beautiful rides that people have put together. They're all modified, but they had to be in that sort of 50 style. So some very classic looking vehicles and a lot of fun. Then Meal Ticket Raceway had there gone in 60 seconds. And I just wanted to show you this race here. So this dude out in front, you can see he's miles ahead of everybody else. No one even close. Coming down to the very last finish straight, and somehow gets himself up on the side and just loses it right at the last minute. Wow, that was crazy. Now, actually speaking of crazy, the Amigos were running a few more modified entries and this guy was, I don't know what happened. Maybe he ran out of carburetor. Ah, oh, it was just, I've never seen a car stop that short on his track. And then Granny's grocery go-getter here, definitely not driven by a Granny from uh, Tune Tracks Racing like she drives on our track. This one, just ended up on her roof. Well, Granny ended up on her roof enough time. Hey, settle. Now, Nine's Diecast, some more good racing action here. Talking about going on your roof. It seems to be the theme of the night tonight. People well out in front, a good solid lead. No one around them to cause it, and they just crash and throw it all away. Well, that's racing, right? Quingoyo with their racing. Some very tight racing action here. Go and check them out. If you haven't seen their track, it's very cool. Relatively short, but nicely themed out and good solid racing. And then we're going to finish tournaments with Poverty Hollow Raceway. So this is pink slip racing. And again, some very tight action. You see the car in behind here pulling right up, trying to get past them every way he could. He just ended up losing it. Street racing time. And we're going to kick off with the Canyon Outlaws. Now, we did something a bit different this week. We sent the Outlaws down the double helix track. So this is the updated helix track for the Canyon. And this particular race here, was so tight between 5.0 and Caven. Great race. Now, King of the Mountain, these Evos seem to be very popular on his track, and I can see why this one was just blazingly fast and left everybody behind. Now, Transport Diecast, as we mentioned, they've finished up with the DIRS, but they are now back into their Kings of the Crest competition. And there was some brutal action here. The guy that was out in front there, I don't know if you noticed, got his wheel up on the side, almost got pushed off, luckily got back on the track and got it together. Now, Commotion Diecast have relaunched their track, and this thing is awesome. Absolutely love it. It's a totally new layout, new theming, and some really good street racing action on this one. So you see this sort of pinky purple car out in front was doing really well. But then this other guy just muscles him off the track, pushes him off into the parking area and leaves him behind. All right, top driver. So they're doing diecast night racing. And oh man, I don't know if you noticed those two cars in the background getting really caught up there as they came out of the uh, chicane section, managed to get it together and get to the finish line. Now, hot car track had some great racing action. And again, another Evo here. Check this out. Evo just blasts away in front 
nice little drift around that second corner, but then almost threw himself off the track right at the end, managed to just skid across the finish line instead. Mike over at RTR had another grudge fest. This is Matchbox versus Hot Wheels. And check this dude out. The yellow car here, I swear, he was aiming for that DSPN sign. You think he's got something against us? Well, I think the driver might. I don't think it's anything to do with Mike. Now, Flat Rabbit, love this track. And we kind of hinted at the extension to the track last time. And check this out, it's so cool. Love this track. And this was such a tight race. There were some beautiful overtakes backwards and forwards. But that one there, savage block to take the win. Wow, that was awesome. And then we're going to finish off with Diecast GT. So we talked about these guys, they do a car review and then we'll set up that car in Forza so you can actually download the exact livery and things. It's very cool. If you haven't seen their track, go and check it out. They've got some good racing on there as well. Now into special events, we're going to kick off with 3D Bot Maker. And everybody got their knickers in a knot last week when he launched it for the first time for the first qualifier. And everyone was rubbishing the track, saying it was too slow, bring back the old track. They just needed to calm the farm and trust that 3D knew what he was doing because he did. And this week proved that absolutely. This track is fast, it's entertaining, and as always, incredibly good production values. Every new track has teething troubles, right? Everyone just needs to calm down and let the track owners do what they do. Absolutely, mate. So just sit back, people, and enjoy. Rust Belt, more snow racing, and this one here was just a savage block. So the dude throws himself sideways straight out of the gate pretty much and then rolls all the way to the finish line to take the win. I mean, not how I want to race, but you know, <laughs> wins a win, right? Now, Sonora Diecast, these guys could basically just be replays of the week the entire time because their stuff is so entertaining. I mean, look at this crash that is just absolutely epic. But we put them in special events because this is just so cool. I love this. I love watching these cars go flying like that. So entertaining. Now Beaverworks, talking of big jumps, they had their rock drop jump. And we're just going to show this one here with the Porsche. So it's a very short run, but it's very, very steep in that Porsche. Nice jump, but not so much on the landing. Did manage to uh, make it entertaining though. Now Chapman Films had two special guests, 2D and 3D borrowing two of the cars from the rally. So that's the Superman Stephen King Escort and Crazy Jimmy's Fiero there. Have a look at that one, very entertaining, lots of fun. Now Urban Underground, we're racing everything they've got and it was the truck versus a grader. I've never seen a grader run down a track and this thing was actually surprisingly fast and quite stable. Man, that is really impressive. Now Diecast and Racing have this short off-road track that we really quite enjoy as well. So it's short but it is brutal and very entertaining to watch. And then finally, in special events, we've got 164 Underground with their street racing. And what I like here is they start the cars instead of side by side to have one behind and they're racing to see if that car from behind can get in front. It's very cool. Now Track Spy, this one here, Next Gen Diecast, is a beautiful track, very high production values and some great commentating. It's a brand new one. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description or you can just search Next Gen Diecast on YouTube and you'll find them. Now, Cleveland Diecast, it's not technically a new channel, but this is a new track. It's been a complete update. Keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, they definitely do some really cool events on that track. Or at least just take one more quick break and then we'll be back with replays of the week. Welcome back. It's time for replays of the week and we're going to kick off with that one with Todd Owen in the background there getting skyward. Going sideways down the track, hits the join in the track and gets absolutely spanked. Man, that was brutal. But check this cool maneuver out. Whoa! That's right, that is now the big Romy. This is the flip onto the roof of the car next to you. A full 360 degree turn, then barrel roll off the bonnet and down onto your wheels and win the race. So Rubber Toe called it, that is now officially the big Romy. If anybody in history can ever pull off that maneuver again. Well, I'd be surprised if anybody does. Now, we got this replay here because we just wanted to showcase the speed of Binford 5000 here. He was well behind in this final race, but look how much speed he pulled on right at the end. Now, he did lose, but it was by a whisker. So much fun. And of course, my favourite drift. 
in that golf Mustang there, Big Sam, just putting it on for the fans. That is just the tightest bit of drifting I've ever seen with walls on either side. Super bit of driving, mate. Now, back to Eminem diecast, and you see this cougar here gets hooked up on the center rail and then smashed off the track. And then Indiana diecasts sock hop slam. This dude in this huge boat of a car here almost drove off, but I think luckily with those tail fins, it was just enough weight in the rear end for him to get it into reverse, get himself back on the track. And then back over to Gwengoyo, and this move here, another cougar getting smashed. It just seemed to be a theme this time. Oh yeah, but we can't go out without this one. Rio Asada on 3D's new rally track, just smashing into the old champion, Stephen King. Look at the height of that jump. That's right, this track is going to be very entertaining. All right, remember to head over to redlinederby.com for all of your racing needs. If you're looking for races, whether you're looking for tips, make sure you head over. They've got all of that information there. There are tons of mail-in races going on if you can't get into the likes of 3D Bot Maker, who's, I think, not taking any till 2022. All right, that's enough for tonight. I'm Tom Spanners Watson. He's Frank the Guru Gibbs. We'll see you next time. All right, mate, we've got lots of cars still to make for the rally, so we should go and get into that. Wow, plus all those other mail-ins. Can you just check again on Redline Derby which ones we've actually entered? There's so many of them.